please stand to face the processional cross at the entrance of the sanctuary. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. One, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, and the Spirit, Spirit of God, God was hovering over the face of the waters. In the beginning was the Word. And, and the, the Word was with God, and, and the, the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And, and we, we have seen his glory. glory. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, 
Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have Have mercy mercy upon us, us, forgive forgive us our sins, and lead us us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you alone, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the choir anthem.
As you know, uh, a few weeks ago, we had our quarterly voters meeting. As part of that voters meeting, one of the things the congregation did was elect new leadership into different positions on our board of directors. This morning at our 8 o'clock service, we installed Mr. Matt Crouch to be our congregational president and Mr. Roger Fangman to be our uh, director of stewardship. Uh, this morning, I think, uh, Dennis, you're here. You are going to be installed as the secretary of our board of directors. Is any of, I think, uh, Marsha Bolton is coming on board as our uh, director of, um, oh, you're here, Marsha. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised. You're here all the time. Yeah. As uh, director of, oh, what, what's yours? Social ministries. Uh, evangelism is still uh, open and in need of a director to fill that role. So um, if the Lord uh, moves you in that direction to help us with that, we would love to talk to you about it. But we are going to uh, install our, uh, our, our friends Dennis and Marcia this morning into their offices. Dear brother and sister in Christ, Holy Scripture tells us that the twelve apostles gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. You have been chosen to fill specific positions of responsibility in this congregation. As such, you are to work with us, the ministers of word and sacrament, that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the temporal affairs of this congregation are properly administered with regard to the position entrusted to you. You are to assist in promoting the general welfare of the congregation and furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and work is the way of all who trust in Christ, it is especially important that you as offers bearers in his church show yourselves by word and example to be patterns of good works and Christian devotion. So in the presence of God in this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the office entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. I place you as members of the Board of Directors of King of Kings Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten and strengthen you in your office that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. We rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts which they will need for the faithful carrying out of their tasks. Most especially, we pray for wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest upon this congregation that our mutual work in this place would bring your gospel to the world and so glorify your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go then in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is never in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of the Holy Trinity is from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated, separated the waters 
that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with, uh, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant-yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first, first chapter. <clears throat> Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did, believe, who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Congregation may be seated, and we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Well, well hello, Laura. Oh, it's yellow. It's very nice. I like it. Yeah. Come on, have a seat. Come on in. Have a seat, friends. Hello, hello. Hi, Jerome. Come on in, bud. Sorry? This is a, a new friend. Yeah, good to have you with us. Hello. Come on in. Have a seat. Good morning. Hi, and I. You want to come up? You can stay there if you want, or you can come up here. Either way. You want to stay with Miss Aaron? That's fine. All right. Well, good morning, friends. Good morning. I don't know if you heard Pastor Danny talking a second ago, but he was talking from the Gospel of John, talking about how we as people are together. Now, you came here this morning, probably. You came here not by yourself. Who did you come here with this morning? Who? Your family? Your family came? Well, families do all kinds of stuff, don't they? Right? They, they, My family, too. Yeah, your family, too. Yeah, you, My family, too. Your family all came. Yeah, and families, families do stuff together, don't they? They come to church together. They eat their meals together. They go on vacations together. Families, they go on adventures. Yeah, families live in the same house. Yeah, something like, yeah, and, and so the families all come to, and, but you know what? All of our families came here today. They came here because what Jesus does for us is that he makes us all part of God's family. So we may all live in different houses, and we have different parents, and we go on different vacations, and we all do all different things with our own families. Yeah, we all do all sorts of different things as our own families, but when we come here, oh, hi, Elijah, come on in. We come here, and we are all part of God's family together. So here's the picture I would like you to draw for me today. I want you to draw me a picture of your family coming here with all the other families to be part of God's family today. Can you draw me that picture? All right, let's have a big prayer clap. Ready? One, two, three. Dear Jesus, thank you so much. For making, me a part for making me a part of my family, of my family. And, your family. and your family. Amen. Amen. So draw me that picture of your family coming to church to be with God's family here.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this morning here on this uh, Trinity Sunday is our Old Testament reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be. God said it, and it was true. It's baseball season, so I don't know how many of you watch baseball on television. So since uh, I grew up, you know, baseball on television has changed quite a bit. You'll, uh, the baseball is pretty much the same. I mean, there's like pitch clocks now and everything else, but... Um, but watching it, the experience of watching it on television has changed quite a bit because now you'll, you'll watch and there'll be a pitcher on the mound and he'll have the ball and he will wind up and pitch the ball. Now, nowadays we have a little, a little thing in the corner that tells you how fast the ball is going. You have a multiple camera angles. You can see right over the top of the batter's head. You have another angle right in front of the batter, and there's the, the computer puts a little, a little rectangle on there so you know exactly where that strike zone is. And that pitcher will throw that ball, and that ball will go right by the batter, and the batter will just watch it go right by. Now, you have all of that technology. You have all of that knowledge. You know everything about what just happened, and you know, you know that that's a ball. But you're not the umpire. And the umpire calls a strike. Strike three, you're out. Now the whole crowd, right, everybody gathered there, boos and shouts. The analysts are on TV playing the replay and talking about the rules and say, no, that's a strike. You're at home, you know everything about it. Even, you know, you can look and even, you can even get a close-up of the batter chuckling and shaking his head as he walks off and the pitcher with a little bit of a smile knowing he just got away with something. The manager can run out onto the field and kick dirt. I, this one I don't understand. The kicking dirt on the umpire's shoes. I have no idea what that's supposed to accomplish. I guess it makes the manager feel better, but it doesn't really do anything. Nothing changes, right? Because the only person, it doesn't matter if anyone else in the world believes that was a strike, the only person who, had, the umpire doesn't even have to believe it. He just has to say it. And it's a strike. That is real now. And that is the game has to proceed from there. Play ball, right? The reason I'm, I'm, I'm introducing that idea into your head, that, that spoken thing becoming what is real, what's that got to do with us here today? That is what's happening in effect, what's going on in our Old Testament reading this morning around creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and everything was mixed up and jumbled and a mess and darkness. And then God said, light. Let there be light. And there was light. And you may have noticed it in the reading this morning. You wouldn't be the first person to notice it in the reading, that there was no sun or moon or stars yet. There was no reason for light to be. And yet there it was. Because when God spoke it, it became true. Now, we're all very sophisticated, and we've all had a, at least a high school education, or on our way to that. And we know how light works. We know how light is generated, and we know how it bounces off of some surfaces and is absorbed into other surfaces. And we read this and we say, that can't be. And we can call out all the physicists and the nuclear scientists in the world, and we can perform experiments and complain, this isn't right. You can't just have light just happen. But all that complaining is about as useless as kicking dirt on the umpire's shoes. It does make you feel a little better about yourself, but it doesn't change a thing. God spoke it, and it became what was real. There was light. There's a lot of this in the Bible. God speaking, and that's what becomes real. One of the most famous examples is Abraham and Sarah. He finds these two people, well advanced in years, and says, Sarah, you are going to have a baby. 
Sarah laughs at the idea. She protests in her laughter. No way. No way. But God's plan came with his word. And because God said it would be, it became real. Later, he talks to Moses. You remember Moses at the bush that does not burn up? He goes to Moses and he says, I want you to go to Pharaoh, you and your brother Aaron, I want you guys to go to Pharaoh and I want you to get my people out of Egypt. Go to the most powerful person in the known world and you tell him what to do. <laughs> Moses says, you've got the wrong guy. That can't be. I don't even know how to talk well. Right? How am I supposed to go to Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the known world, and start bossing him around and telling him, why would he listen to me? Why would the people I'm going to listen to me? I'm a wanted man. But God says, Moses, I will rescue my people with mighty acts and power. And so it happens. God's word comes and it creates that reality of his people leaving Egypt. Later on, a prophet, Elijah, after the Israelites have lived in the promised land for a long time and have failed miserably to be the people that God called them to be, the prophet Elijah gets crossways with the pagan queen of Israel. And he's hiding in a cave. God says, what are you doing here? I am the last one. They have killed everyone and they're going to kill me next. But that didn't matter. God says, I want you to leave this cave and I want you to anoint new leaders and I will reclaim this nation for my, for my name. Because God spoke it, it came to be. And then finally, the Blessed Virgin. Angel, Angel Gabriel comes to her and says, Behold, you will be with child. And even Mary... Who, whose faith is a shining example to all of us. Even Mary protests. I'm a virgin. How? That can't be right. That can't be. But God spoke it. His words become a reality as his word becomes flesh and takes up presence in her womb. God speaks his word. And he creates that reality in which we live. Now, I've said all that. I've shown you where to find this in the Bible, so you know I'm not making this up. I've said all these things because you need to know this. This is terribly important for you. Because God says things about you. God says things about you. And his word about you makes it real as real as the stars in the sky and the dry ground we stand on. And his word for you is this. You, you are not a sinner. You are a saint, a holy one of the most holy God. And just like the crowd and the managers and the analysts and the people watching at home, all sorts of red flags go up. Wait a minute. Your own conscience, your own conscience can point to the rule book and tell you that you're not a saint. Your own conscience reminds you day by day of how you have failed to live up, live up to God's word how you have failed to live according to his truth. Your conscience points this out to you. You are well aware how about many times when you have broken God's law, and you're also aware that you've broken it many times that you're not aware of. But God's holy word creates what is real. You are not a sinner. You are a holy saint of God. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. That is reality. 
The old has passed away, the new has come. You are a saint of God. Now your conscience, like I said, likes to point to the rule book and, well, we have an enemy, the evil one. The devil can object to this all he wants, that you're no saint. He says you're too weak. You are not capable of living the way that God commands you to live. You are not capable of loving the way that God commands you to love. But God's word is what makes it real. Hebrews chapter 4 says this about Jesus. He's a high priest who has in every respect been tempted in the same way that we are, and yet he never sinned. So let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace so that we can receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have every bit of power that we need to overcome whatever temptation arises in our hearts. God says you are a saint. You have every bit of power that you need to overcome any temptation in your heart. And that is true because God speaks it and His Word creates what is real. So our conscience can point to the, real, to the rule book, but our conscience doesn't make reality. And the devil can point to our, our weakness, but the devil doesn't create reality. And the whole world can boo and shout about all this. The whole world can, can speak and scream at the top of its lungs that there is no sin and there's no such thing as forgiveness for sin. There's no devil. And your conscience, the world says, is just a trick that your brain plays on you so that we don't go extinct. That there's no God to empower you. That your fate is like the fate of everyone else. You have a certain number of trips around the sun and then that's it. But the world's booing and shouting does not create what is real. God's Word creates what is real. And this is what God's Word is. Jesus says in John chapter 3 that the Son of Man must be lifted up so whoever believes in Him would have eternal life. Because God gave His only Son so that whoever believes in Him would not perish. John 3, again in, in chapter 3, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. John chapter, four, uh, John chapter 5, truly, truly I say to you, whoever hears My word and believes Him who has sent Me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment. He has passed from death to life. John chapter 6, verse 40, this is the will of My Father that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. John 6, 47. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. And that's just the first six chapters of John. There's plenty more. Dear friends, your conscience can point to the rule book all at once and point out all your errors. The devil can point to your weakness and tell you that you cannot live according to God's will. The world can boo and shout all it likes that you're no different from anyone else, but none of those things make a lick of difference to what is real. They might as well be kicking dirt on the umpire's shoes. It makes no difference. God's Word has announced your forgiveness. God's Word empowers you with His grace to follow His commands, and God's Word has granted you eternal life in His kingdom. God has spoken and it is real. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our worship continues on page 10 of your worship folder. Uh, today is the festival of the Holy Trinity, and as such it is our custom to, uh, to speak together the Athanasian Creed. You'll find it printed there on page 10 and 11. Usually we stand for the creeds, but given the uh, extended length of the Athanasian Creed, we will remain seated. Let us confess our faith. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever, Whoever does, does not, not keep, keep it whole and undefiled will, without, without doubt, perish, perish eternally. eternally. And the Catholic faith is this that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons 
nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead Godhead of the the Father Father and of the the Son and of the Holy Spirit Spirit is one, the the glory glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The The Father Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father Father eternal, the the Son eternal, eternal, the Holy Spirit Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just Just as as there there are not three uncreated, or or three three infinites, infinites, but but one uncreated and and one one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, we are also prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father Father and and of the Son. Son. Neither Neither made, made, nor nor created, created, nor nor begotten, begotten, but but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And And in in this Trinity, Trinity, none is before or or after after another. another. None None is greater or less than than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the unity, the trinity in unity and the unity in trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever whoever desires desires to be be saved saved must think thus about the trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Therefore, it is is the the right right faith faith that that we we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the the Son of God, God, is is at at the the same same time time both God God and and man. man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who who suffered for our salvation, salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At At his his coming, coming, all people people will rise again with with their bodies, bodies, and and give an account account concerning concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will, will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This This is is the Catholic Catholic faith. faith. Whoever Whoever does does not believe it faithfully and and firmly cannot be saved. We stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
O most holy Trinity, we bless your name. You have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Guard your church. Keep her in the true faith until that day when you welcome her home. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the great bridegroom of his bride, the church. Bless Ryan Philpott and Allie Barnes as they are united in holy matrimony this weekend. Give them both faith and love to live according to your will and the picture of marriage your Son has given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, as you continue to uphold your creation, be with us as we still suffer under the curse of sin. By your will, grant healing, comfort, relief, and aid to those who are in any need. Especially this day, we pray for Rick Miller recovering from surgery, for Lynn Nyquist, Rhonda's brother, recovering from heart procedures, for the Scott family who mourned the death of Kurt's grandmother, Mae Carlisle, for Stephen Dawson, the son-in-law of Phyllis Brown, who is recovering from surgery, for Kendra Patch and Haney, the relative of Betty Hughes, who is in need of healing, for Nora Haywood, the newborn daughter of Wyatt and Molly, we give you thanks and we pray for her continued health, for Teresa Sheldon, the family friend of the Popas, who is suffering from leukemia and in need of healing, and for Lan Basse, the friend of Carol Knipp, whose mother is recovering from COVID. We pray also for Pastor and Joyce Schultz, Pastor Stroyfurt, Jen Calvin, Amelia Morton, Tom Schwint, Ernie and Mary Smith, Gavin Galusha, Ron Ryan, Larry Lean, Jordan Walker, Jack Palmer, Tammy Shereko, Sandy Craig, Marilyn Augustine, Russ Baker, Larry, L- G- Larry Welchel, Barbara Wahlberg, Monica Ellington, Sophia Morales, Rob Fort, Sarah Long, Betty Arnold, Stacey Livey, Jeremiah Kimmel, Joan Broninger, Tom Westervelt, Carolyn Henricks, Jim Pemberton, Jim Thompson, Mark Rhodes, Ben Rhodes, Gabe McInnes, Stacy Williamson, Kristen Murray, Michael Manley, Al Wilson, Mark Miller, Ken Bolliger, Kurt Henricks, Lana Wilson, and Tracy Schultz. We pray also for Esther Anderson, Bill Brooks, Catherine Dieterding, Joe Andrietta Edwards, Rose Ellington, Becky Hughes, Richard Long, and Imogene Montgomery. Grant to these your servants what is most needed in each situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering, and we invite the children to bring forward their drawings. Thank you. Thank you, Hattie. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zeke. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Orlin.
We stand for the service of the sacrament on page 12. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You once revealed your name to Moses in the burning bush, and through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you unveiled the mystery of your holy name in the trinity of persons and the unity of being. Grant that we, who have been baptized and instructed in the triune name, may faithfully eat and drink of your Son's body and blood, and worship you in spirit and truth, O Father, through your Son and the Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take. Eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Our worship continues on page 17 with the Nunc Dimittis. We stand to sing. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. All right. So, Pastor Frank, the big things going on today. Oh, are big do, big doings, Pastor yes, Danny. Yes. Big doings. So we have our car show, our fifth annual car show, happening out in the parking lot, right? Because we can't fit the cars in here. Uh-huh. Um, properties would have an issue with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially mine, because it leaks oil. But that's another story. <laughs> um, car show out in the parking lot at 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. You can come and enter your car as late as 2 p.m., and there will be refreshments in the fellowship hall as well. So come check out some very neat classic cars and uh, things of that nature, uh, 1 to 4 p.m. today. And then, Pastor Frank, yes. immediately after this service, immediately. Uh, we will have uh, folks getting the whole building ready for vacation Bible school because that begins tomorrow and runs tomorrow through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'm very excited about this. First, well, gosh, you, you only had a couple of uh, vacation Bible schools at all um, before, we, uh, before we had to stop doing them in 2020. So, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so this is, yeah. yeah, firing up all the engines. Yes, here we go. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah very excited for it. So um, when you come here on Monday morning, friends, neighbors, children, grandchildren, you'll enter through the Welcome Center, and there will be an opportunity to register the morning of if you haven't pre-registered. Um, and if you'd like to come and help volunteer, corral kiddos, and have fun, certainly show up uh, any day this week at any time, and we will put you to work helping out. Yeah, very, very absolutely. excited. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see, Pastor Danny, I, my, my wife and I just got back from a little mini vacation this week, so if you sent me an email and I didn't deem it an emergency, you're probably still waiting for me to respond. So um, 
We had a great time, and I'll get back to you this week. All right. All right. Yes, Amy Babcock. Oh, yeah, a couple of hands. Just in here. Yeah. Here, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Well, God's blessings to you this week.